My childhood was normal and nothing out of the ordinary. Two middle class, hardworking parents just getting by in a nice city, and then of course, me and my little brother. He's six years younger than me and he was at my grandma's house when this happened. My mom was at work, working a double shift, and my father was also working. He was a truck driver, so oftentimes he would spend weeks away from the house. My mom also worked a lot to cope with the fact that my father was always gone. I think it made us all a little bit sad sometimes, but really, our family was very close and we always had a great time together when we were able to finally hang out. Sometime during the night, it wasn't too late yet but definitely starting to get dark. My mom wasn't going to be home for a few more hours, and I was getting pretty bored with nothing to do. I was pacing back and forth through the house, just trying to figure out how to cure my boredom. I sat down on the couch and began looking for something to watch on TV, but nothing was catching my eye. Shortly after, I went and grabbed my PS4 from my bedroom so I could play Madden football out in the living room since the TV was twice as big as mine. As I was hooking up my PlayStation, I felt something weird inside. As soon as I looked up, there was a face smothered in the window right in front of me, staring directly at me. I froze and screamed. Then the man also started screaming. He started yelling for help and to let him inside, just over and over. I had no idea who he was or what he was doing, but he was practically begging and screaming at the top of his lungs. I couldn't move a muscle because I was just so scared. Sounds weird, but I almost let him in despite me being that scared. I was just unsure of what to do. He was a big scary man, but he appeared to be in danger. Thankfully, my mom pulled into the driveway as this was happening. I was so relieved to see her but also terrified that the man might try to hurt her. He stopped like a deer in headlights, and my mom yelled at him to leave, and he did. Thankfully, my mom called the cops when she got inside. When they showed up, the man was sitting across the street on the curb in front of a foreclosed house. The cops found him there and asked him questions. He stuck with his story, though, and said that a group of men in ski masks tried to kidnap him and that they beat him senseless. For some reason, I just didn't believe that. The cop didn't really seem to either, to be honest, but there was nothing the officer could do technically. We later found out that the man was our new neighbor, and he had just bought that house that was foreclosed right across from us. It was a good thing that my mom showed up like an hour before I expected her to that night. That guy still lives next to my parents, and I lived there for a few more years after this incident. He never necessarily bothered us again after that, but man, he was a creeper. We had to live by his word and take what he said as the truth. Even though it seemed unlikely, we had no choice but to accept it. Nothing outlandish happened with him after this, but there were times I was very uncomfortable by his presence. He used to smile and wave at me whenever I walked past his house, and he always seemed to be outside watching when I got off the school bus. There were also times I heard him having full-on conversations with himself, and I swear I even saw him hitting himself in the head while doing so a few times. He liked to randomly scream in the middle of the night like bloody murder. There was definitely something wrong with him, so we always did our best to keep our distance. My dad really, really disliked him, probably even more than my mother and I, violence really was not a thing in our neighborhood, and I mean that literally. So his story was just weird. The last thing I want to mention is when I saw his face the first time, he wasn't cut up or bleeding like he was when the police found him. I genuinely believe he did that to himself to make himself look like a victim. It sounds crazy, but I know there are people out there crazy enough to do that.
My boyfriend and I used to live in a small house that we were renting at the time. We were young and it was our first place, so we needed something affordable. We found a place for just $700. It was a two-bedroom, one-bath, 900-square-foot house. It was in a really rough part of town, but we thought if we minded our business, kept our noses down, and stayed alert, that we'd be fine. It was nothing fancy at all, but it was still more than what we needed. We both had jobs, only being paid $10 to $15 an hour, and we were both also full-time college students. So we were out of the house more than we were home, especially my boyfriend. He worked as a garbage man and got lots of overtime. He would get to work around 7 a.m. and sometimes wouldn't be home until 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Whereas I, on the other hand, worked at a salon for a new and upcoming small local business. I was paid under the table there, so it helped with taxes and the lack of hours I was working. My boyfriend, whose name is Arnold, by the way, took night classes for college. He was studying law but later changed to business after just a year. That's not really the point, but the point I'm trying to make is that he was hardly ever home, mostly to eat and sleep. Even on the weekends, he worked a part-time job for extra money. I would always have dinner ready for him every night so he could eat before class and so we could spend what little time we had together every night before he would have to leave at 9 o'clock for 4 hours. I would usually be sleeping by the time he got home. When Arnold returned home, I was nowhere to be found. Of course, he freaked out and filed a missing persons report after blowing up my phone and me not replying for over 30 minutes. It wasn't until two days later that Arnold ran into our neighbor while getting the mail, and for some reason, he thought that there was a possibility that he might know something. Arnold admitted that he didn't really think he did, but he was trying everything he could at first by asking anyone any kind of questions he could think of. He asked him when he saw me last and stuff like that. This is where things get much crazier. My boyfriend thought he was acting really weird, and way weirder than usual, so he called the cops on him. But since they didn't have any proof or probable cause, and they didn't have a warrant nor consent to search the house, it didn't go very far. Arnold had this very serious feeling inside that something was wrong with this guy and that he had something to do with me going missing. He literally snuck into our neighbor's house later that night after he saw him leave. The house was disgusting and was honestly as bad as some of the worst hoarders episodes I've ever seen. He looked all around the house and was yelling for me in case I was in there. He had no clue if I really was, but I finally heard him yelling for me and I screamed as best as I could from downstairs with the duct tape covering my mouth. He didn't hear me yelling until he started to search downstairs for me. Yes. The man kidnapped me and did unspeakable things to me for days. Arnold got me out of there and we called the police. Of course, we lied a bit so Arnold didn't get charged with breaking and entering. We told police that Arnold heard me screaming down there and that he rushed in here to save me and that we called the police right away. We never had any issue with Arnold getting any charges, thankfully. I don't really like to talk about how he kidnapped me and how it all went down. It makes me too uncomfortable. I'll explain it briefly, though. While Arnold was gone that night and I was sleeping, the man broke in and managed to knock me out cold by beating me half to death and dragged me next door in the middle of the night without anyone noticing. This story is very real and what happened to me is still something I live with and sticks with me to this very day. He used to stare at me like a creeper every day, and we always thought he was strange, but never did we think it would come to this. I'm pretty sure this is literally every woman's worst nightmare. When I was 29 years old, I'd saved enough money to buy my first house. 
It wasn't anything special, and honestly, all things considered, it wasn't in the best neighborhood either. But I was still proud of the accomplishment nonetheless. I'd met all the nearby neighbors within the first two weeks I moved in. Considering the neighborhood, I was surprised to discover they all actually seemed pretty nice. A couple of them even invited me over for dinner a few times, and having lived in different apartments all my life, this wasn't really something I was used to. Of course, they weren't all like this. However, two houses down from the house I moved into lived a man that was probably 50 years old. Upon moving in, every other night or so, the dude would knock at my front door at some absurd hour asking for stuff. For example, the first time it happened, he asked me to find any spare bread I wasn't going to eat. Another time, he asked me if I could fill up a bucket with water because his was turned off. It was just random but somewhat understandable things like that. But I drew the line when he started asking me for money. I figured I had no obligation to be constantly meeting this guy's needs. I mean, I had pretty much just met the dude. I started opening the door to his knocks less and less, but this didn't seem to have any effect on the number of times he would show up. Fast forward to a night a few weeks later, and again, another knock. I planned to ignore it like I'd grown accustomed to doing by that point, but as I looked through the peephole, I noticed the guy looked distressed. Seeing this, I decided the right thing to do would be to open up the door. So I did. I asked him what he needed, and what he responded with was not at all the type of response I was expecting. He asked me if I could come over and show him how to use his new grill. Now, this happened around midnight, which in my opinion was an extremely odd time to start grilling. But against my better judgment, I decided I would help him. I was pretty into cooking at that point in my life and figured taking 10 minutes to show the guy how a grill worked wouldn't be the end of the world. I told him that I'd be over in a second and that I just needed to put some shoes on. He thanked me and started walking back. A couple of minutes later, I made my way over to his house. I opened some gate and walked into his backyard. It was dark, so it was hard to see, but it was clear there was no grill. On top of that, the guy was nowhere in sight, although his back door was wide open. I stuck my head inside and yelled out for the guy. Yeah, I'm down here. I need your help getting some meat from the freezer. The muffled response came from down a set of stairs just to the left of me. I was hesitant to go down. There were no lights on down there. In fact, there wasn't a single light on throughout the whole house. I yelled down the stairs, asking him if he could turn on a light so I could see. There was silence for a few seconds. Eventually, he responded, no, they're broken. I can't do that. I knew something was off at that point. I yelled back something like, I think I'm just gonna go, man. I kid you not, the second after I said this, audible footsteps started sprinting up the stairs. My flight reaction kicked in immediately. I ran directly back to my house and locked the door behind me. I pulled back a set of curtains and looked out one of my windows but I didn't see anything. I was terrified. I thought about calling the police but decided against it, figuring I really wouldn't be able to prove anything that just happened. For the next few days, I didn't leave my house for anything except work. During those days, I never saw the guy nor did any late night knocks occur. Exactly one week after it happened, I was talking with my neighbor across the street. The conversation eventually landed on what I experienced and how I was planning to move because of it. But I was just met with a look of confusion. I was then informed that no one lived in the house I was talking about. It had been abandoned for two years. This prompted my neighbor to call the police. However, 
the police would find nothing inside or around the house. I moved out a few weeks later, so that's all I know. I'm not sure if anything else came from the situation or not. I still don't know who that guy was or what he was trying to lure me into. This experience happened to me when I was only nine years old. Being that it was so long ago, I don't remember every small detail, but I'll do my best to keep everything as accurate as possible. Back then, I lived in a considerably remote area and the US neighboring houses were a good half mile apart. Therefore, while my family had met a couple of our neighbors, many of them were complete strangers. This included the resident of the house to the left of ours. I don't remember his name, but it was an elderly man that lived there. He was creepy, to say the least. All of the windows on his house were spray-painted so that no one could see inside, and his whole yard was completely overgrown. I know all this because every Monday through Friday, I had to walk past his house to get home from school. Every time I did this, the man would either be standing on his porch watching me or trying to make conversation with me as I walked by. It got to the point where I dreaded walking home from school just because I'd have to walk past him. But this wasn't even the worst of it. Maybe once or twice a month, the guy would make the half-mile walk to our house in the middle of the night. He would then shine a flashlight into the window of my room. I knew it was the same guy too because one of the times, I witnessed him walking down the road towards our house. Looking back, this was 100% extremely alarming behavior, but at the time, I thought the best way of handling it was just to ignore it. Therefore, I didn't tell my parents about it. I also remember reasoning that my bedroom was on the second floor, so it's not like he was able to see much of inside my room anyway. Skipped to a summer night in that same year, and I was once again woken up by the light of a flashlight shining in my room. This time, it was followed by a subtle thud sound against the wall. It felt like my heart had stopped. The only thing running through my mind in that moment was how it sounded exactly like a ladder being propped up against the side of the house. Not long later, my suspicions would be confirmed. A knocking sound rang out from the glass of the window. I looked over and was met with the smiling face of the man gesturing me to open the window. But no. I screamed and ran to my parents' bedroom. I desperately explained to them how the neighbor was outside my window. They went in my room, but of course, he was gone by that point. The worst part is they didn't even believe me chalking it up to me seeing things. Therefore, the police were never called. But even now, as an adult, I know exactly what I saw. I try not to think about the intentions he had towards my nine-year-old self. I never saw him again after that. In fact, not even a week after the occurrence, his house had a for sale sign up next to it, which to me serves as further proof that it was him. I've lived in many different places since then, and not one neighbor comes even slightly close to how creepy that man was. One day when I was only 17 or so, my older sister and I were hanging outside together in the backyard. Our mom was probably upstairs reading or cleaning or something. My dad wasn't there, and I don't know where he was, probably work or something. I was on my phone, just scrolling through Instagram, lying down on the trampoline. My sister Ava was on the swing set, probably just doing the same thing I was doing. We would occasionally say something to each other about the videos we saw on our For You page, and we would send them to each other and laugh or whatever until we were interrupted by our neighbor Bella. We weren't super close with her, but my parents were, and my mother and she got along very well. Hey guys, come here, she said, 
standing in her backyard where the fence met the middle of our property lines. We confusingly walked over to her as we had no idea what she wanted, but we knew to respect our elders, so we had to see what she was calling us for. She told us that we needed to go inside and get our mom and that she already called the police. What, what are you talking about, my sister asked. Just trust me. No time to explain right now. Please, just do as I say, guys, said Bella. You guys are in danger. Run, she said. Someone dangerous is lurking around your front yard. We reluctantly but also quickly scattered inside after that. We told our mom, and she looked outside, and there was a man on our front doorstep. I didn't recognize him at first as his head was shaved completely bald, but it was our old neighbor. Long story short, a few weeks before this, our neighbor was arrested for killing his wife and daughter, which I didn't know at this point, by the way. I'll get back to that later. My mom saw who it was and ordered us to run up to her room and to lock the door and to only open it if she asks, so we did. We were terrified, but we had to listen to our mom. We ran upstairs and we were waiting. My sister was crying, and I was trying to calm her down. Just by how freaked out mom was, we both knew something was very wrong, and we were dying to know what was happening. After a few more minutes, our mom screamed and we heard glass shattering. Luckily, she was close to the stairs already and she was able to get to the room with us before the man grabbed her. We locked the door and put a dresser in front of it to buy us some time. This man was screaming like nobody's business that he was going to kill us and pounding on the door for over five minutes. Suddenly, it stopped. We heard police sirens in the distance and the man tried to run away. The cops almost had a shootout with him, but after some screaming and threatening, he finally subdued and was taken back to prison. So, this guy we're talking about is named Brian. He was charged with at least two counts of first-degree murder for killing his family. Like I said earlier, it was said that he escaped prison about two hours before this, and he wanted to come back to get revenge on my family. He was convinced that my father was the reason he got arrested. Brian thought he was going to walk away scot-free for killing his family, but he was under the impression that my dad snitched him out somehow. I'm not sure why he thinks that as I don't know the whole story. My father won't talk to me about it, not that it matters anyway. I guess my mom and dad didn't tell me or my sister about what happened next door at first, but they said they were planning on it soon. They just didn't want us to freak out, supposedly. But that's about all I can get out of my dad about everything. Not even my mom knows the full story, unless she's lying to us. My parents probably thought there was no urgency to tell us what happened next door since he was locked away in prison at the time. But somehow, he escaped and was looking for revenge. Hopefully, they have him under control in there this time. It was personal, and he escaped just to try and murder us.